Welcome back, everybody. Um, this this whole show today, I feel like, is so jam packed with knowledge because we're covering obviously PlayStation Five, and it has such a legacy, especially coming from the PlayStation Four, that mm -hmm. we needed to get a friend on board another friend because we just need more faces here. So I actually had the chance to speak to Paul Hunter, AKA next gen player about the PlayStation 5's release, as well as that compared to previous PlayStation releases. So check this out and then we'll be right back to chat about it a little bit. Welcome back everybody. I am so happy because I have Paul Hunter, AKA next gen player joining me. And we're gonna actually talk about the PlayStation 5 in comparison to the previous generations of PlayStation. Uh, Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for popping by. Thank you so much. Really excited <laughs> to be here. I'm excited to have you here. I see that you're like outfitted in the ghost, you know, where you have the PlayStation 5 box. I got my PlayStation 5 box. We are flexing. We're all set. We're all set. Yep. Next gen. Has Next arrived. gen. We're, we're here. And I, it seems like you're really excited with the PlayStation 5. Um, now, when we talk about the PlayStation 5, obviously, Next Gen is arriving in a year that is a bit different for everyone. How do you think that this gen really um, separates itself from previous launches of the PlayStation 5 in, in particular? I think for me, the biggest thing that's really setting this uh, different from previous gens is just the fact that Sony has really hit their stride, right? Like they, they hit their stride back in say like the PS2 era back when they just completely dominated the, you know, that gen with 150 million consoles sold, but they sort of lost it with the PS3. They reclaimed it back with the PS4. So I think like the Sony that we're seeing now is Sony firing on all cylinders. You can see that they are so ready for this gen. Like they launched with so many games. We got I'm I'm playing Demon Souls. I'm playing um, Astrobot. I'm playing uh, mm -hmm. Miles Miles Morales. You know what I mean? Like there's there's all there's so many games. And just from like a, a technical perspective on the console too, like just everything is, is like is really well designed and and like they're ready to go. So I think uh, I think you know like they're they're definitely on their right foot. And you know even from the the rebranding of the PlayStation Studios, you know what I mean? Like yes, they, yeah. They, they did that. Uh, I think it was just recently, like yes, yeah, sometime this year that they did that. Um, so they're just like they're really going for this like premium like filmic experience, right? So I think actually that's probably one of the biggest differentiators as well, right? Like they, I, I would say like in previous gens, you could tell that they wanted to cast sort of this like wide net and just sort of like, they just wanted to just dominate the entire industry. But yeah. starting, starting, I would say with the PS3 era, era, that is when Sony really became this like premium storytelling uh, group right like they if, if you look at say ps1 and ps2 they had a lot of cartoony games with like jack and daxter and and sly cooper um prop of the rapper like all those games and then yeah. suddenly suddenly they got like hammered by microsoft in the ps3 era and and they're kind of like you know we got to redo things we got to rethink who we are and i think they they sort of captured like the best from their their movie division and their their music divisions and just sort of like smash that together for ps3 and that's how we got franchises like infamous and uh, the last of us and um and uncharted and stuff like that so yeah yeah, I, I, yeah I have to say like um it, when you think of the playstation 5 launch obviously as i mentioned before it's not happening in a traditional year uh, but what you mentioned is it it does feel like it's a different experience. It, it's familiar, but different. It doesn't feel the same. Like it, it feels like you're upgrading for the reason of getting into next gen um, where, you know, I think in the past when you did see that upgrade to the PS3, for example, you didn't quite feel the difference at launch from the PS2. And I think that's really important to have that. And one of those differences that the PlayStation 5 has is in the interface, which, you know, I feel like PlayStation, when you look back at all the previous renditions of the consoles, they all kind of had similar but different interfaces. What do you think about the PlayStation 5 interface? I love next gen because I like newness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I, I like when everything is just completely new. And when I first 
played the PlayStation Five and I was going through the user, user interface, like I didn't even know where half the things were. Like <laughs> fe yeah. fe features were missing, features were, new features were there, features had moved around. Uh, but I, but I love it. Like it's, it's almost like an Easter egg. Like when you, when you yeah. discover, like, oh, that's where that feature is, and like, oh, that's, uh, that's like they've improved that feature this way, right? It's, it's really exciting. But I mean, like overall, it's such a slick and sleek presentation. Like you can absolutely tell that this user interface was built for 4K televisions. Like you've got yes. basically like on the on the top row there, you've got all your games. And then like all this space, like in the bottom two thirds just shows like phenomenal graphics of whatever game you've highlighted. So if you've got like Miles Morales highlighted, you've got like a big picture of, of Miles in the bottom corner there, right? And if, if you switch over to Astro, same thing. Like it just, it looks really good. I'm, I'm so used to having dynamic themes on PlayStation 4. Like I was constantly, Sony would like release some cool new one for like Ghost of Tsushima, and of course I've got to apply that. But it's like with PS5, I don't even know if I need to. Like the interface. No, itself, no, no! Don't say yeah. that. You need the theme, and I really think I like what you're saying here because for me, you were like all four at the beginning. For me, when I first experienced the uh, UI, I was like, "What the heck is going on?" Because I'm a very like everything has to be symmetrical. So when you have the tells at the top, they're in like the left corner as well they're not like symmetrical like just fully at the top and instead at the bottom like when you're in games you could press the home button and then you see like the tiles for like your mic your controller your mic um going to home all that centered in the middle so it was very off putting to me but i do appreciate the fact that they do have that huge space for whatever graphics that which you know, I'm playing Spider-Man right now. So like for Spider-Man graphics for me, um, yeah. you could really see. And I think that is a direct reflection of the theme success in PlayStation 4. They were rele releasing themes for like every one, like every big game, uh, Final Fantasy VII, The Last of Us. And these were things that people were talking about on Twitter. They were trending because of their themes for Black Lives Matter, right? So I feel like this is a direct reflection of that. And hopefully we see uh, those themes come back. For sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to be applying them w when they come in. Like, get, don't get me wrong. It's just, I'm just saying like from a visual perspective, it just like, it really blew me away when I first saw it. So um, I, like, I can't even imagine what a dynamic theme would be on top of what you're just describing with Miles Morales. Like, yeah. it's going to look really good. So yeah, I'm excited for those. And and I, I am actually a little disappointed because the, the themes that I had on, on PS4 were like, where they were so good, right? I yeah. have the Final Fantasy one. I've got the Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us. Like I would, I would love just to like, even temper just apply it to my PlayStation 5. Just so <laughs> Let I can, me like, put Tifa <laughs> right here on my PlayStation yeah. 5. <laughs> I know that'd be really cool. Uh, speaking of the UI, do you think this is the best design for any PlayStation console that you've experienced for the UI? Good question. I would say like from the overall presentation, yes. But the thing is, is that I, I have noticed that there are still a bunch of features that are missing, right? So it's mm -hmm. it, like that is kind of disappointing. Like, for example, like even something basic like applying folders for your games, I, I yes. can't find it, right? Like, I don't think it actually exists. <laughs> I, I have like for, for PS4, I've, I've got like, here's my Sony games, like here's my Ubisoft games, here's my like RPGs, like I've got everything like neatly categorized. Um, and I, I just, I can't do that on PlayStation, which is, you know, it, it's a little bit frustrating. So, um, so, so there's that. And then like, um, you know, you can't, you can't get like 1440p resolution. Like there's just like certain things that are missing there. But um, the one, the, the one thing that I did want to mention that I thought was like really, really good for the new user interface is that the PlayStation store now is natively built into the user yes. interface. Like that is like, that is a big thing because like, I can't, the PlayStation store on PS4, geez. Yeah, <laughs> hot mess. It was yeah, a hot like, mess crashing and slow and oh man like you like because I, I know like microsoft they recently redid their store and it was like yes. lightning fast right like everything yeah. just loads and i i'm just sitting there like please like playstation like can we have this same speed like come on um and i i think they've actually achieved it right like it's it, like everything just sort of loads instantly fast now for the playstation store so yeah <laughs> thankfully they've improved that one big time 
Yeah, I, I have to say there there are those features that are missing. Um, the PlayStation 4 um, store was horrible and seeing that now integrated kind of makes up for those features that we would have expected to be on the PlayStation 5. Um, but in terms of us experiencing the, the PlayStation 5, we do know that some people don't get to experience it because there are limited uh, consoles at release. How do you think PlayStation handled pre-orders this time around compared to its pre previous gen of consoles oh geez i mean well the, the first thing is that i mean i've been around for so many gens i've actually been around for every gen for playstation um and and consoles have always sold out that it's it's always been a nightmare <laughs> like yes it's, like bottom line it's always been there's never been a launch i don't think there's ever been a launch of any console really that that's been unless it was like you know like like i don't know maybe <laughs> yeah or something that wasn't like super popular but um but like yeah they're always sold out i mean yeah. like nintendo switch had had shortages for a year right like we had shortages for several years right so i think like we have to really recognize that that just happens, right? And especially yeah. like as we move up to an online world and now we're buying everything online. Like I remember websites uh, crashed last gen when I was trying to get the PS4 and, and the Xbox One. Um, but the one thing that I will say is that I do think that the communication that Sony had was not the best for sure, because mm -hmm. like they they even said, uh, I think it was it was in that that August uh, video that they had. It was like- Yeah, so, like, end of August, yeah. Yeah, like right, like right after that, they were saying that I think it was like Jeff Keighley had an interview, and and uh, and then they said that they were going to give like ample notice of when pre-orders are going to start, and then suddenly they surprise us. We like well, they didn't surprise us. Jeff Keighley <laughs> surprised us and said that the pre-orders are going <laughs> yeah. live, which is yeah. which is really weird um, for them to do that because it's like this is you're launching a console. You would yeah. want to tell your fans about when it's releasing, but instead we actually had to hear that from someone within the industry, which is kind of like, it's a really weird way to go about it. Um, and then it, the timing of the, it was just a mess, a hot mess. I don't think I've ever seen anything more messier in any of the previous generations of PlayStation releases. But I, you know, you mentioned that you were ordering your PS4 online. Did you do that this time around with the PS5? I I did, but the thing is, is that I think so. Uh, we're we're up here in in Toronto, and, and the yeah. thing is, is that I, I personally I think that there's obviously a lot less demand in Canada than there is in in other places like the U.S. where where things like just sell out so fast. So um, I I've actually been super lucky because I just like as soon as I find out that a pre order happens, I I've got like 15 web browsers open, and I'm like <laughs> I'm like hitting F5 and refreshing. So like I I got my my Xbox Series X and uh, PS5 pre ordered like no problem, right? Like it's okay. They, they, they they just like the websites didn't crash like yeah so i but the thing is is like i said like i was i was like i was on the pulse like as soon as something like somebody tweeted i even had like like three or four people that i knew that would be tweeting stuff like that right um that like like wario on on twitter right like he's always saying like you know pre-orders are available now so yes. um so i like as soon as one of them tweeted that some retailer had it like i was like bye 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 oh and the other thing too is like i i, I also like pre-entered all my information right so that's that yeah like, I, you were I, I good, saw, yeah I see people online that are just like, oh, like I, I, I lost it when I was like entering my credit card number. And I'm like, well, like this is the console launch. Like, <laughs> even if it's just temporary, <laughs> put your credit card in there for one day, one day, just so that you don't have to type it in. Because like even the the ten seconds of yes. typing it in and ten seconds to verify that you put it in correctly, you're gonna lose your console, right? So. Um, Where were so, you, Paul, when I needed uh, that advice? My first, I tried to uh, pre-order my PlayStation 5, uh, like a huge retailer, and I was putting in my info, had it in my cart, pressed, like, I was already in checkout, so I pressed next to, like, confirm, and the console was gone. It was it was gone. Like South yeah, Park, it was gone. It was not <laughs> good at all. I, I was oh, so geez. upset with it. And, you know, I understand people's frustration because... One thing PlayStation has been clear about is that they weren't going to they weren't going to produce a lot of consoles as they first expected. 
So right, because yeah. of the pandemic, they knew that they were producing less as Xbox uh, communicated as well. So I feel like people shouldn't be completely disappointed. Although, yes, it does suck. It's hard for me to say that because I also have a PlayStation 5, right? Um, so yeah. I understand the frustrations if you did not get the PlayStation 5. But you're absolutely right. This happens every console generation where people are just losing their mind. The only difference this year is that we're not in a lineup to lose our minds together. We are instead at home. And I think yeah. that's the difference because we are home. We don't, we can't appre appreciate anyone else's sorrow to yeah. feel better. You know, that's, that's a really, that's a, that's a really good point. Really, really good. Well, cause, cause the, the thing is too, is, you know, before you, you would have the online, like if we're looking at say like the PS4 or the, or in the Xbox one launch, like you had the online retailers that said pre-orders are going to be available at this time. And yeah. if you did, if you didn't get your pre-order secured, you had the knowledge that you could just line up at, like at midnight the night before the console's release. And get yes. your console right yeah. so so that was like it was always like your default it was like your crutch if anything like goes wrong w online like you can definitely you might have to spend eight hours lining up but you can get your console but like but this time yeah you if you missed out online you couldn't get your console all right and, i know and, we're yeah, sorry, sorry. I know we're running out of time because your time is limited here. Uh, you're a busy guy. But I do want to ask you before we go, the PlayStation 5, the future of PlayStation 5, do you think it will outdo the success of PlayStation 4? Oh, that's yeah, another t tough question here. That's uh, another tax one. <laughs> I, you know what? I think yes, first of all, yeah. I think I think it will. And, and the main reason why is because they they had to rebuild themselves during the PS3 era. So when when PS4 launched, like I felt like Microsoft and uh, and Sony were sort of like neck and neck because 360 was was obviously firing on all cylinders, right? Um, but now, like I said, like Sony's hit their stride now. They they they're like they've dominated Europe, right? Europe is just like PlayStation nation. Uh, even in the in the US, um, there's there's slightly more PlayStation uh, fans now than than Xbox, right? And that was like back in the 360 era, it, it was flipped. So they're like, and they're they're gaining ground in the UK too, right? So if you look internationally, like Sony, the only spot really that I can see Sony not doing very well is Japan, because Japan just they they just don't like consoles anymore. They like <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo Switch, and they like their mobile and their PC gaming. Um, so that's a little bit a bit unfortunate, but. I think, I mean, like, well, the other thing too you, to recognize is like, look at the games that released at launch and look at the games that are coming out in the first year of the PlayStation That's 5. That's Final Fantasy, like you got Final Fantasy exclusive. You've got Red God Rock. of War. Yep. Yeah, you got Horizon. Like the, you got Gran Turismo. The Gran Turismo is the most successful franchise that, that PlayStation has, right? They like, they're, they're going to have games in the first 18 months that, took PlayStation 4 like three or four years to, to yes, create, that is right? True. So they're like, if you don't have a PS5 by the end of next year, like, whew, we gotta, we, we gotta talk because there's, oh, some, there's, no. there's, there's some good games on the PS5 coming out and already out, so. There you I go. Think, Everyone yeah. has a timeline in terms of when they should get the PlayStation 5. And that, that's the whole thing with next gen. I feel like for PlayStation 5, yes, you're still getting those exclusive titles at launch, but in a year from now, you're going to get so much more. So if you couldn't get your hands on a PlayStation 5 off the bat, even if you get it a year from now um, when you could save up for it, you're still going to be playing all the games that everyone's going to be talking about. So I, I can't wait for the future of PlayStation 5. I know you can't wait, uh, but we're just going to have to and wait for all the great games to play. Uh, Paul, thank you so much uh, for dropping by. Where can everyone find you? Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter. It's at NextGenPlayer. All right, I'll have to check it out uh, some more. We're going to look at all the stats that you tweet. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. All right, uh, Paul, thank you so much again for joining us. That was really great. I love when we get to talk to more of our friends. Uh, what did you guys think about that? Paul obviously believes that the future of PlayStation may be su more successful than the PS4. What do you guys think? I would tend to agree with with uh, if essentially if they pretty much just did what they did for the PlayStation 4 era, now having all the upgrades that the PlayStation 5 does, then that alone will be enough to make it a bigger, better generation than the last one. But obviously, they're going to do more than that. And we'll just have to wait and see what that will be. Um, but I believe it. And and yeah, I, I mean, big ups to Paul. That was great. Uh, he has a lot of great insight about all this stuff. 
uh, way more than than I would be able to. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks to Paul for showing up. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> How about Malik, uh, Steve? What do you guys think about the future of PS Five? Yeah, go forward, Malik. Yeah, I I think it's bright because I mean he also he me- you mentioned Ragnarok and I had completely forgotten that they had confirmed that. Do you guys remember how much every gaming outlet freaked out about how good it felt to throw uh, Kratos's the hammer? Oh, oh yeah. Like, oh, people freaked out. People Dude. freaked out about that forever. Imagine that with happy feedback. Yeah. And then you got oh, like Gran Turismo God. where they're dedicated to making that an amazing driving experience. That with haptic feedback. I There's just so many titles that got mentioned that just made me think like, okay, this is how they're going to do it. This is how they're going to do it. And like Horizon 2. Imagine if they make every single robot that you fight and or ride feel completely different. And yeah. It's just PlayStation has really put themselves in a good position to be successful going forward. Yep. I, I can't believe also, chat, during that, uh, Malik actually told us GT, that's his first time playing a Need for Speed game. I, I played I played Gran Turismo before I played Need for Speed. I was, is- I, I was super into like the actual racing games. I still am. I sure. look... I, I before they announced the PS5, I was gonna spend four hundred dollars on Logitech's brand new racing wheel. So if that if that puts it in a little really? bit perspective, for, yeah, because mm-hmm. they have this new wheel. It has kind of haptic feedback. It has uh, an internal oh, motor that helps cool. it turn, um, oh, and cool. the gas pedals uh, have pressure too. So cool. there, there's a lot of cool things. But yeah, I think that PlayStation is in a good spot more so than PS4 to just really kind of dominate with, I think, some small features. They're doing a lot of small things right that over time will kind of make the brand. Because also, PlayStation has a lot of titles that they can draw from to, mm-hmm. to kind of bolster their portfolio. Xbox is still waiting for Master Chief. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're waiting for him to come save them. So, I mean, like... I think the Xbox Series X is a great upgrade. I think that the PlayStation Five is the step into the next generation. Let's let's not forget about Elder Scrolls. That's that's going to be exclusive. Let's not. It's, be a big one. it's coming. It's coming. That's going to be. Exclusive. Don't you put that evil out there. I can't. Nah, my heart can't I'm take telling that. You. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's a reality. Yeah, it's that's going to happen. That I'm almost yeah. positive. Yeah. As long um, but, as long as it's on PC too. That's, oh, that's yeah, another thing. Yeah. There's there's a good chance, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but but yeah, PlayStation like they just they got a good couple of years ahead of them, and with Ragnarok, with Horizon, even just even just looking at the games that are out right now and the games that will be coming out in a year from now, it's a great lineup already. If you got it, if you got the PlayStation Five, let's say this time next year, you're probably gonna have Spider Man Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, Horizon Two. God of War Ragnarok, obviously getting it bundled in with Astro's Playroom and mm-hmm. any other game that's cross-platform that you can get on the PlayStation 5 that'll come out between that time. Then we're, we're not even considering like a Spider-Man 2 will be on the way. You know, maybe they'll do a God of War 3 down the line. You know, maybe yeah. we get a Ghost of Tsushima 2. Like there is so much that they can do this generation that's just going to be insane for the PlayStation yeah. 5. 